Chapter 16 I'm not sure what it was about Lil Kitely, but I took to her right away. We all did. Even Bobby seemed to thaw a bit. I caught her smiling once or twice as Lil yacked and joked around with us kids. Lil was a light-hearted lady with no tattoos. She worked nights as a waitress in a truck stop diner just off the interstate near Emerald and had been on her way to work when her rusted out, dented and dented, sorry excuse for a car, gurgled and gargled and choked on its last drop of gasoline, then died. She had been sitting in a car by the side of the highway for nearly 20 minutes, contemplating sticking her thumb out to hitch the 25-mile stretch between where she was and where she needed to be. When Lester Swan saw her and stopped to bus. Now as the bus jounced on down the highway toward the interstate, Lil moved to help me clean up Fish's face, never even asking what had happened. Lester was having trouble keeping his eyes off Lil and on the road where they belonged. Every now and again, someone in another car would lay on their horn like a shout when Lester drifted off out of his lane and onto theirs as he twisted his head to glance Will's, Lil's way. With Lil there, it was almost like having a mama on the bus. She fussed over each of us in turn, cleaning and bandaging Fish's cheek and checking Will's eye. Here, let me fix this up for you, kidling, Lil said to me as she t tugged gently the purple ribbons on the of the flower of my special occasion dress, unpinning and repinning the ribbons higher up on my shoulder. That silky flower had become rumpled and off-kilter from the day's ruckus, and my dress was now dirty and wrinkled. This is a mighty fine dress you've got on, continued Lil, still concentrating on the ribbons. My papa picked it out all by himself, I told her, remembering the contented look on papa's face as I danced that dress around the living room. I smiled to myself at the memory, then faltered as my lips began to tremble. As we drove on and on through the dark, I told Lil at length about my papa and how he'd bought me in my dress, not giving up until he'd found me just the one. How he'd handed it to me in a big white box tied shut with stretchy gold elastic that made it feel extra special. My heart ached as I told her about the world's largest port swing and about the accident on the highway and the cars stacked up like Sunday pancakes. Then I told her about Mama and Rocket and how they were already there, already with Papa in Salina Hope Hospital. Lil listened to my whole story without interrupting once, but her face showed me that she was hearing every word as her expression changed from a warm smile to a laugh to kind and sympathetic concern. My papa needs me, I said at last, more to myself than to Lil. He needs me to get down there to Selena. He's like Sleeping Beauty, and I have to wake him up. I ignored Lil's unmistakable look of worry as I said this. I knew she believed that I was getting my hopes up to think that I had the power to do anything to help Papa. But she was wrong. So I ignored her. I ignored her like I ignored all the voices in my head, the ones that were supposed to, the, the ones that were supposed to be there and the ones that weren't. I would figure those out later. After Papa was back home and better. I had no time for listening now. Your Papa sounds like a very nice Papa, Kidling, said Lil softly. That's a very spiffy dress. That made me feel proud at first. Then, looking down at the yellow fabric and the white rickrack, rickrack striping, Stripping or striping. I couldn't help become, becoming self-conscious as I remembered how the girls at the church had laughed at it. Yeah, I guess, I shrugged, feeling low for my embarrassment, like somehow I was disappointing Papa by doubting the specialness of my special occasion dress. After a pause and a quick glance at Bobby, I said, You don't think this dress makes me look too much like a little girl, do you? Lil gave me a curious look. Does it make you feel like a little girl? She asked quietly. Only when I'm around Bobby. She's, si she's 16, I said, by way of explaining. Lil's face broke into a broad smile as she too looked Bobby's way. You know, that Bobby makes me feel a bit like a little girl too, Lil said with a laugh. But I'll tell you a secret about 16, she continued, bending down to whisper in my ear. 16 can feel older and scarier than 42, which is what I am. I think Bobby's just feeling sharp-edged right now. So don't you mind her. Your dress is perfect. That made me feel better. I smoothed out the wrinkles that had become pressed into its skirt since I'd put the dress on back in Consecutive Branzas, overly conscious of the fact that Will was watching me. Lil looked from me to Will knowingly, 
Well, isn't that boy of yours just the Tomcat's kitten? She said with a smile, nudging me with her elbow. What? Will's not... He's just... He's not... I stammered in protest, feeling my cheeks burn. That boy can't stop staring, and I know he's not looking at me. It's plain to see Will sweet on you, Lil continued with a small laugh, patting my leg in a way that made me feel as though she and I had been friends for a long, long time. You see, Mibs, you're not such a little girl. You are, you've already got a handsome boy looking your way. I sealed my mouth tut. Sh- sh- I sealed my mouth shut at that. I remembered the way Ashley Bing had kept her eyes glued on Will back at the church in Hebron. I also remembered the way I hadn't liked her doing it. I could imagine Ashley's voice in my head. Missy Pissy's got herself a boyfriend. With Emma Flint echoing, a boyfriend. Don't fret it, Kidling, said Lil. Trust me, in a few more years, Will Jr. will be the least of your worries. Lil put an arm around my shoulders and squeezed me to her, just as Mama would have done. For a minute, I thought maybe Lil might be an angel sent to look after us as we bumped our way along the highway on that in that pink, big pink Bible bus. Not a devil-tailed angel like Bobby's tattoo, nor a heavily perfumed and sappy smiling angel like the air freshener hanging in the front window of Miss Rosemary Miss Rosemary's minivan. A real angel, one with really big feet.